Welcome back to Good Morning San Antonio here at home. San Antonio's official Christmas tree is on the way. Love to see it. It's coming from the northwest in Oregon and expected to arrive at Travis Park on Tuesday. HEB says the tree will stand nearly 50 feet tall and will be decorated with 10,000 white lights and dozens of colorful ornaments. It's all for the 38th annual HEB tree lighting celebration. The celebration kicks off the day after Thanksgiving on November 25th at 3 p.m. And a quick reminder about the city's veterans parade will be today. Organizers are excited for the parade's return after not having it for two years because of the pandemic. The parade starts at noon tomorrow near 4th Street and Alamo Street and will be it will end at San Saba Street. It's today. I'm sorry. Today at noon. <laughs> yes, today at noon, 856 this morning and now 44 degrees as people get out and about and get ready for their Saturday. We'll be right back. This morning on Good Morning San Antonio, Veterans Day has passed, but the city isn't done celebrating our nation's heroes, where you need to go downtown to see today's parade. No Shave November is off to a fast start. We'll look at how your favorite faces are doing this year on the KSAT leaderboard. And taking a live look at City Cam, things are starting to get a little bit clearer out there. We will check in with Sarah Spivey for our Saturday forecast. Good morning. It's 9 a.m. Saturday, November 12th. We have RJ in mm -hmm. the house this morning. Yeah, stepping in for my guy, Max Massey. I know Max is enjoying a little bit of time off, so very glad to be with you guys hanging out. And your beard looks great for oh, no shade. Oh, thank you very much. Appreciate it. I'm still trying to move up that board, okay. but yeah, yeah, RJ Marcus, no shade November. Check yeah, let, let's give RJ some donations. <laughs> yeah. I know... Um, our Mark Austin oh, and Mike, Mike Osterhage. Man, always, always at the top of our yeah, leaderboard. Yeah, let's let's show let's show our RJ and Max <laughs> Massey some right love. now, but hopefully number one in your hearts. <laughs> hopefully moving up that board. <laughs> All right, it's 44 degrees, Sarah. Yeah, it is chilly. It is chilly. Not as cold as it was an hour ago, but still pretty cold with temperatures in the 40s. You know, this weekend, Worst Fest, just the last weekend of Worst Fest. If you want to head out there to New Braunfels today, here's what you can expect. And really, New Braunfels forecast is very similar to San Antonio's. Only a high temperature of 60 degrees, so it's going to be cool all day long. And if you have plans out tonight, know that it is going to get cold pretty quickly. By 9 p.m., we'll already be in the 40s. As we look at today's pollen count, I want to note that molds are high today. They went up quite a bit over the last 24 hours because we did get a little rain yesterday. So the molds are climbing up. Pigweed and juniper are present in low amounts. Now this weekend we're going to warm up to 60 degrees today. Today's going to be windy and cool. Early tomorrow morning we'll be at 37 in San Antonio above freezing in San Antonio. But I do expect that the hill country parts of the hill country will have their first freeze of the season tomorrow. It'll be a light freeze, but still Still, we'll talk a little bit more about which neighborhoods have the best chance for a freeze early tomorrow morning and then 59 for the high for your Sunday. But if you think this is it for the cool weather, you'd be wrong because another cold front is expected early this upcoming week. I've got a look at that and our rain chances in a few minutes. RJ, Sarah. Sarah, thank you. New this morning, a man is dead after a rollover crash overnight on I-35. Police say four men were traveling in a car going southbound on 35 when the driver lost control and rolled the vehicle into a fence near the Poteet Jordanton Freeway on the southwest side. The driver ejected from the car and dying at the scene. Two other men were taken to University Hospital in serious condition. Now taking a look at some of your morning headlines, a Frontier Airlines flight made an emergency landing Friday night after a passenger was found with a box cutter. Flight 1761 from Cincinnati to Tampa, Florida was diverted to Atlanta and landed safely. The passenger was taken into custody by Atlanta police and no other details were given about what happened, but there were no injuries to anyone on the plane as well. Passengers were given overnight hotel stays with a new flight scheduled for this morning to Tampa. Over in Ukraine, people celebrating in the streets of Kherson after a treat of Russian forces. So Ukraine recapturing its biggest prize yet after nine months of Russian rule. Locals welcomed Ukrainian troops in as heroes with Russia retreating. Ukrainian troops captured stocks of abandoned ammunition and retook more than a thousand square miles of territory in the south. And back here at home, the gift of giving is happening this morning on the city's east side. Volunteers are prepping hundreds of Thanksgiving meal kits to give away to people who need it most. Our Camelia Wattis joins us live. So, Camelia, who can pick up these turkeys and when can they do so? 
Well, RJ, Sarah, it's first come, first serve. There's already a really long line, and it's for people who may not be able to afford a Thanksgiving meal on their own. And volunteers have been working all morning. Take a look. You can see them getting the stuffing, the rolls, um, even some vegetables all packaged up, ready to be put into, into some cards cars reverend james james johns robinson james robinson tells us more he's with us right now and can you tell us what um besides the giveaway what else is going on today oh we're gonna have a, a ton of vendors out here we have a um, uh, buffalo soldiers motorcycle club alamo city hot rod uh antique cars some low rider cars and we have a 1920 fire truck oh. can you tell us who we're serving and why today we're, we're serving the community. We're serving the community. When my mom served uh, under the bridge of I-35 Durango, she served the community. And a lot of people ask me, uh, do I need to register? What side of town do I need to be on? It's, uh, we're in the need for food right now. If you're from the east, north, south, west, come on out here. Awesome. And is there anyone you want to thank to help you put this all together? Oh, yeah, we got uh, definitely H-E-B, uh, my, my good friend over there, Jerry Johnson at SA Number 7, New Brownsville, East Houston. Thank you, thank you, thank you. They did a great job. Uh, Chastity and, and uh, Fernando at Midtown and everybody else, thank you, thank you. That's awesome. So there's a lot to look forward out here today. Like he said, you can come out Spurs here. Tickets. There's a lot of Spurs tickets as well. Those are also like there's turkeys, there's food, there's Spurs tickets, and a lot of people coming out here today. I'll throw it back to y'all in the studio. RJ, Sarah. All right, thank you very much, Camelia. Obviously, people out there stepping up as the holidays are right around the corner. Check, taking a look at our time and temperature, it is 9.05 this morning, 44 degrees outside. Still head on GMSA at 9, a parrot making headlines after stealing something from a reporter. Whoops, there you go. You don't want to miss the foul play. Oh, I saw what you guys did there mm. <laughs> before 9.30. Can't wait for that. And the facial hair is coming in strong from our guys here at KSAT 12. After the break, we're talking about No Shave November and how you can help make a big difference. I'm loving the selfies that you guys are posting. Some are like doing the whole smolder look. Ooh. Does it help raise money? I don't know. <laughs> whatever I'm, it takes. Whatever Sarah. it takes. I love it. All right, 44 degrees at 9.05. It is going to be a chilly next couple of days. Sarah Spivey will have that forecast when we come back. All right, welcome back to Good Morning San Antonio. No Shave November is in full swing, and you've probably seen a big change on some of the guys here at KSAT 12. They all have beards. That's what it is. Yes, all right, so <laughs> everyone has a reason for participating. Our Max Massey was off today, but here's what he had to say about why he's doing it. Why I do No Shave November. Cancer has affected so many of my family members and so many of my friends and the people I care about. So to just put the razor down for a month to help raise awareness and raise money, it means so much to me. We can raise money not only to help find a cure, but to help local families who are going through the unimaginable. All right, my guy right there, Max Massey. So here's a look at our leaderboard right now for Team KSAT as we continue to raise funds here. Mike and Mark always, always at the top there. Look at Mike, already over $1,700. Mark, over $1,200. And Stephen Cavazos, who's co-organizing this with Justin Horn, doing a great job there, 650. I'm in ninth place. Hey, it's <laughs> okay. Out of 15. I don't even know where Max is on that. I will say, okay, let's give some love to our RJ and our Max Massey. You can take out your phone right now, scan this QR code. It's going to take you to our No Shave uh, page on mm -hmm. KSAT.com where you can donate on one of our team members' behalf. And I just want to say, I love these selfies because the guys are <laughs> trying to, like, look their, I guess, sex. Can yeah, I say sexiest? You your you best? Sure, sure. And I'm, I'm here. Give us a yeah, smolder. Give, give us, give, give us give the smolder. This camera. Give the camera. Look okay. straight into the camera and smolder. Mm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that? just for that, you got to donate to RJ. Yeah. I don't know what that was, but <laughs> it was an attempt at a smolder. It was great, RJ. Yeah. They're going to get a text from your wife like, what there was that? What is going on here? <laughs> Whatever it takes to raise money. Whatever it takes. Research. It's all yes. in good fun, yeah. too, Sarah. And Absolutely. Hey, but we're all smiles this morning because this weather has got everyone a little giddy. You know what? I think it does. We don't get cool weather all that often in San Antonio, so when it comes, it's pretty nice. So, uh, yeah, we had a strong cold front yesterday. Take a look at this morning's lows 
RJ and Sarah are smoldering over there as I'm talking about the weather. Yeah, 41 degrees this morning in San Antonio. Got down to 35 in Kerrville, 36 in Bernie, 41 in New Braunfels, and 40 in Seguin. Our average low this time of the year is 51, so we were 10 degrees cooler than average. And with a morning low of 41 degrees in San Antonio, it's the coldest we've been since March 13th. That's 244 days. Wow. Yeah, nice welcome change here in San Antonio, but it's going to stay cool today. The cold air is going to stick around for a while. It's 46 degrees at the airport right now. You can see mostly sunny skies. North winds at 15 miles per hour, so we do have a uh, wind chill. Feels like it's 40 outside. 46 in San Antonio, as I mentioned, still 37 in Rock Springs, 47 in New Braunfels, 44 in New Valley, 48 in Eagle Pass, 45 in Del Rio. In a neighborhood view, we've got 41 in Bernie. 47 in Hondo, 47 in New Braunfels, 41 in Seguin, 44 in Canyon Lake. Those winds, as I mentioned, pretty breezy from the north, sustained at 15 miles per hour. But even in New Braunfels, we've got a sustained wind of 20 miles per hour. That's why we have a wind chill right now. It feels like 34 in Bernie. It feels like 34 in Bandera. Uh, earlier today, this morning, we were seeing wind chills in the 20s in areas around San Antonio. And the good news is, is uh, winds are not going to get much stronger than they are right now. We may see a wind gust up to 25 miles per hour throughout the day, so it is going to be a breezy day. But by this evening, our winds will really start to uh, die down quite a bit. And in fact, that'll make it pretty cold tonight with those winds uh, dying down fairly quickly. We'll be at 55 at noon and 50s for most of the day. We'll really barely just reach 60 degrees around 3, 4 o'clock this afternoon. And then as soon as the sun sets, it's going to get chilly by 9 p.m. We'll be in the upper 40s. So again, if you have evening plans tonight, get that heavier coat with you. You're going to want it. Looking at looking at temperatures across uh, South Central Texas, 60 in Del Rio, cool everywhere. It'll be 60, uh, 55 rather in Rock Springs, 62 in Catula and 59 in Gonzales. Now, early tomorrow morning, the next thing I want you to know about the weather is that there is going to be a light freeze in the hill country. First freeze of the season for areas in the hill country. Not San Antonio, it will be 37 in San Antonio, but up in Kerrville, 32, 32 in Rock Springs. And take a look at the neighborhoods. When you get down to the neighborhoods, it's mainly going to be for folks north of Loop 1604. So even in some areas in the northern part of Bear County, Timberwood Park, even Leon Springs, there could be a light freeze early tomorrow morning. Temperatures should only uh, top uh, bottom out at near 30 degrees in Bernie, 30 in Bulverde, uh, but again, above freezing in San Antonio. So if you do live in those communities north of 1604 and in the hill country, remember that any kind of sensitive vegetation should be covered or brought inside. We do not expect it to stay below freezing for a long time, really only a couple of hours here and there. As we look at the weather setup, here's our cold front that moved through yesterday. It's pushing off to the east, bringing a lot of snowfall to parts of uh, the Midwest. And in its wake, there's another cold front heading our way. This one is going to be pulling all this cold air across the United States once again towards San Antonio. So that'll be moving through on Monday, bringing scattered showers in the morning on Monday. Coming up in the next half hour, we'll talk a little bit more in depth about the rainfall on Monday. But then behind that front, look at this. Temperatures are going to stay in the 50s for the high temperatures and mornings will be right in the uh, upper 30s, low 40s. So this cool air sticking with us through this week here uh, after the weekend. And again, I'll talk more about that chance for rain coming up in just a bit. Back to no shave November. I'm I'm just kind of, <laughs> I don't want to say trolling, but scrolling through all the guys. Yeah. Max has a good Very one where he's like smoldering. He's not, not smoldering, but it's like a, and then Justin Horner has one where he's like, Mm, yeah, I, I need to step up my game. You I know. To think of I need a to step up. I'm just doing selfie. like a smile, and I need to do like a little. Pose yeah, we gotta raise there. money, RJ. A Zoolander pose, possibly. Blue steel. Producer Colin. Blue steel. There we go. <laughs> All right, we'll get it done. 46 degrees at 9:15 this morning. And coming up, popular comedian Dave Chappelle is back in the spotlight. We'll tell you why and when you can watch him. After the break, what's the weirdest thing you've ever seen at an airport? Wow. <laughs> Probably the break always goes down at the airport, right? So YTSA says people are doing some strange things to bring guns on a flight.
And taking a look at our lottery numbers from last night, pick three, we have five, two, four, and then seven there on the back end. And then daily four, three, seven, one, nine, and two. Cash five, 18, 19, 20, 31, 35. Let's take a look at those mega millions. 1, 5, 17, 37, 70, Mega Ball 22, Mega Plier 3. Welcome back to Good Morning San Antonio. While well, a crime reporter in Chile became a victim of foul play during a live report. That's right, Nicholas Crum was reporting about a rise in local robberies when a parrot landed on his shoulder and check this out. So the bird robbed him <laughs> of one of his wireless, there it is, wow. ear pods. So <laughs> Crum didn't have to wait long eventually. The bad boy birdie dropped the ear pod. <laughs> Good thing is that the suspect is definitely a flight risk. Wow. Get it? Very nice there. Was that Colin? Very nice, right? <laughs> story there. Yeah, has that ever happened to you during the live shot? Not I've a got, bird, but I've any gotten, sort of animal I've or insect. I've pooped on yeah. by a bird. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's <laughs> like rained on while I was live. But. I'd almost rather have the bird take the AirPod. Yeah, though. I'd rather get pooped on. It's yeah. not fun. And if you thought that that was the weirdest animal story of the week, well, take a look at this. TSA agents in Florida discovered a raw chicken stuffed with a gun in a traveler's attempt to smuggle the weapon through airport security. The agency shared images of the poultry season pistol online, along with a pun-filled post calling the incident a personal foul. Wow. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Lots of fouls going on. Lots of foul play. Also Lots of like foul activity raw, you can here. get like salmonella with, you know, raw, handling raw chicken. <laughs> There's let's, a lot of stuff going on there. Let's be careful. Yeah. <laughs> let's be careful. Do not take any raw chickens or wild poultry to the airport. The airport. Yes, Period. Just weird. Just yeah, weird it's in weird. Don't yeah. be weird. All right. It's 920 and 46 degrees. Up next, moviegoers are returning to Wakanda for Marvel's latest movie. What the reviews are saying about Wakanda Forever, that's still ahead. In your morning spotlight, comedian Dave Chappelle is set to host Saturday Night Live this weekend, but the appearance is not going over well with some due to Chappelle's past comments about the transgender community and his stand-up routines most recently in his Netflix special, The Closer. He, this is Chappelle's third time hosting tonight's music performers are a tribe called Quest. And one of the most anticipated films of the year, it's finally out. That's right. We're talking about Black Panther Wakanda Forever. That hit theaters this weekend following 2018 Black Panther, which of course was one of the biggest blockbusters of all time. And with the passing of Chadwick Boseman, it became more than just a sequel. Cast members say everyone and their characters both had to process the loss in their own way. And now that the movie is here, audiences say that they're ready to go to watch this movie in Sacramento, California. Saket Clark with the I Am Sac Foundation says that this week was more than just a movie premiere, but her community coming together. It's a sense of belonging. It's a sense of normalcy. With all of the violence, the gun violence, with all of the things that are going on today, we have something to look forward to where we can all come together and be together. And that sense of community hitting home for Sacramento. The movie's director, Ryan Coogler, actually grew up in the Bay Area, Northern California, and graduated from Sacramento State. His vision of Wakanda royalty hit the red carpet, bringing a sense of honor and self-esteem. All right, here's a look at how it's doing on Rotten mm -hmm. Tomatoes. So far, it's certified fresh with critics, 84%. Nice. Pretty high with critics, fans loving it. And we like to go by the fans. They're at 95%. Yes, I always check out Rotten Tomatoes. Some people say you shouldn't do that, but I just I, do, yeah. I don't. I don't want to, I want to let, let it, I want to ruin it myself. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And our executive producer, Joy Presley, is a movie junkie, so you know she's already seen this one. And this is her bit of a review here, possibly unpopular opinion. Joy says that quote, again, this is from Joy, just like the rest of the world, I hyped up this movie a lot. She said they did a great job honoring Chadwick Boseman and it was visually stunning. But that being said, she felt like it just didn't quite add up to the first one, end quote there. Joy said that she doesn't want anything to give, she doesn't want to give away any part of the movie, but left feeling like it was a little bit slow and lacking the power that made the first one so epic. Joy gives it three out of five stars. Okay, wow. I, I think maybe it's because Marvel like can't top itself. 
it's like every Marvel movie or series, it's like so good, so good. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. how do you even top mm -hmm. some of their like great movies? Yeah, that first one was unbelievable. Right. I'm a big fan of Michael B. Jordan, and I think that's what made that movie I'm so I'm a special. fan too, yeah, but Michael B. Jordan. Peach has it, boys. Yeah, <laughs> miss him <laughs> there. All right, it's 927 and 46 degrees. Meals on Wheels is known for delivering food to those who are homebound, but now they've got a new place to help even more people in the future. And we've got a preview still ahead at 930. David Elder taking us to one of San Antonio's premier brunch spots for some truffle infused eggs wow. and toast. That's the most millennial thing I've ever said. It's a preview next on Texas Eats. Good morning, San Antonio. It is 930 on this Saturday, November 12th. Happy Saturday. Happy cold front. It's here, 46 degrees. Sarah, I know you were I was I was actually right by your place on the south side yeah. when when it blew in around one o'clock and I was like oh my gosh I was wearing like shorts I was like it's, I was not, <laughs> not I was not ready for this no 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 which you. is um you know you have a friend who's a meteorologist Sarah Do you want to who can <laughs> let you know you know when the cold front's it's moving through like, <laughs> yeah it did move around to lunch and knocked our temperatures down from the 80s into the 40s and it's in the 40s right now in san antonio take a look at temperatures around the alamo city in new Braunfels, it's 47 46 and 46 in san antonio 44 in seguin 50 already in pleasanton even cooler in the hill country where it's 42 in kerrville 39 still in rock springs and it's in the 40s in fredericksburg across the nation you can see that dense cold core of air across the central plains that's behind that front that moved through yesterday and notice that it's actually warmer in washington dc and in new york city than it is in san antonio by some 20 degrees as the cold air has yet to make it to uh, the east coast now yesterday was veterans day but today there's plenty of activities going around to honor our veterans the sa veterans day is going on at hemisphere from noon until 10 p.m. And around noon, it's going to be 55 in San Antonio. Wind gusts up to 25 to 30 miles per hour. Mostly sunny today. We'll top off at 60, but still cool all day long. And you'll need that jacket in the evening. Temperatures will quickly fall back into the 40s after sunset at 540. I want to mention that molds are high today in the pollen count up from yesterday. We did get a little bit of rain with the front that moved through yesterday that allowed molds to go up. The good news is we're not really seeing much tree pollen kick up behind that front. Pigweed is low, juniper is low. And coming up in the forecast, we're going to be talking about another opportunity for rain and and an early morning freeze for some parts of the viewing area, the first freeze of the season. I'll tell you which areas are more likely to see the freeze coming up in a bit. Thank you very much, Sarah. And we've been telling you about it all morning. Hundreds of Thanksgiving meals, I'm already getting hungry, are getting ready to be taken home this morning. Okay, so it's a turkey giveaway. It's a tradition that's been happening for 17 years. That's where we find our Camellia Wattis. So Camellia, where do people need to go to get one of these free turkeys and can anyone show up? No, so anyone can show up. It's first come, first serve. And I want to give you all that address. I know some of you all have been calling, so I just want to get this correct. It's 1211 West Tyne Road. Again, 1211 West Tyne Road. Let's give you a look about how everything's looking out here today. A lot of the preparations are mostly done. Um, you can see that people are just waiting to, to bring the food to the cars. We have hundreds of turkeys, 500 turkeys, as well as stuffing, rolls, vegetables, the works. We even have Spurs tickets. I want to give you all a look um, at what's in each of these bags. You can kind of see right over here, there's piles of them. They have already organized everything. And like I said, it's first come, first serve. It's a giveaway that begins at 10. The San Antonio Police Department is also going to be out here barbecuing. We also have several vendors out here set up shop. We see Saws, uh, Eastside Idea, Public Schools, um, Alamo Colleges, all these vendors out here set up shop in 
in the cold and we're expecting uh, the motorcycle to come by, show us some hot wheels. And like I said, this is a 17 year tradition that continues here at KCHL radio station. Again, that address, 1211 West Hine Road. And you better get in line because when we got here, there was already a line wrapping around the building. Like I said, this goes on from 10 a.m. to noon. And for now, I'll throw it right back to y'all in the studio. RJ, Sarah. Thank you very much, Camilia. One, now to one of our top stories this morning. RSV cases are pushing hospitals to the edge, filling pediatric units. Some are at or near capacity as the flu season starts to heat up. As ABC reports, a hospital in New York City with the growing concerns and pleas for help. CS Mott Children's Hospital in Michigan announcing Thursday it is 100% full. We have stretchers in the hallway. We have children um, being treated in chairs in the hallway. Mott now forced to deny incoming pediatric transfers from other hospitals and postpone surgeries to try and increase the number of beds. Two days ago, we were giving over 400 breathing treatments in that day. During the rest of the year, we're probably, we're probably around 100, 200 max. RSV cases overwhelming pediatric hospitals nationwide. Pediatric occupancy now at 78%. In Maine last month, Shannon Goodwin's infant daughter, Rue, was diagnosed with RSV. She was gray and limp. Goodwin brought Rue to the doctor, but her case quickly became more severe. They called 911, rushed her to the hospital where they tried to intubate her seven times. And then they had to do CPR for four and a half minutes because they lost her heartbeat. After 10 days, she was taken off the ventilator and is now doing better. This elementary school in Kansas City shutting down for three days after more than a fifth of its students came down with respiratory illnesses like COVID-19, RSV, and the flu. And happening today, if you have bulky items you want to get rid of, now's your chance. Solid Waste Management is hosting a free landfill day for San Antonio customers. And here are some details. You can drop off your items at the Republic Services landfill off of I-10 that is just past North Foster Road or at the Waste Management landfill on Covell Road that is on the southwest side near Lackland. You will need to show a valid picture ID, bring a copy of your most recent CPS energy bill, for a list of all those acceptable items that you can drop off, just head to our website, ksat.com. Also happening today, Veterans Day has passed, but the San Antonio Veterans Parade will be held later today. Organizers are excited for the parade's return after a two-year hiatus due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The parade starts downtown at noon near 4th Street and Alamo Street and will end at San Saba Street. Also happening right now, a huge veterans fair. It's happening downtown this morning. It kicked off at eight o'clock this morning and then at Hemisphere Park. There will be music, food vendors and more. It's all free, open to anyone. We have all the details on our website. Just head to our KSAC community section. And we are starting to see a lot of holiday lights going up around the city. And this one right here, Lightscape, a very popular event at the Botanical Gardens, is officially open to visitors. The Winter Light Spectacular features more than one million lights and festive artistic displays. If you went last year, some of the favorites will be back, like the Winter Cathedral. But there are some new features as well. They are called the Pillar of Lights, known as Kinetic Hues, and the Flower Forest. We have food, we have drink, you can hear holiday music, um, see lights, um, and you really also get to experience the garden as the one mile walking path takes you through a lot of different areas. All right, organizers say that this is a great event for everyone, including a family night out. How about maybe take your wife, husband, or just go out for a date. And one fun fact here, there were 11 proposals at last year's event. So a lot of great uh, Instagram picture taking. You could do that as well. So that's Apparently very cool. romantic. Yeah, very romantic. <laughs> and uh, Lightscape beginning now through January 8th. Yeah, I saw on Instagram immediately on Friday when it opened, I was like, oh, everyone's mm -hmm. at Lightscape. Yep. <laughs> All right, I want to see how many people get IG. proposed to at the Lightscape. This yeah, year. that's an interesting stat to uh, keep track of there. Okay, got to know. <laughs> yeah. We got to know. 939 at 46 degrees. And still ahead at 930, a family didn't know that their house was on fire, but then they were rescued by a heroic police officer. Why their smoke alarms did not go off.
If you've traveled around Texas, you know how important rest stops are, like Bucky's. Mm -hmm. How some students are working to make rest stops for monarch butterflies on their way to Mexico. And taking a quick look at live cam this morning as the sun is out. Temperatures starting to go up just a little bit here, up to 48 degrees as people get out and about on their Saturday morning. Well, the nonprofit Meals on Wheels is known for delivering meals to those who are homebound. And after over 20 years in an old building, the nonprofit will soon move to a brand new location that is four times the size of their original headquarters. We had the honor of getting a preview of that new property and what this means for the future of the nonprofit. This is this building was really built by the communities. The nonprofit known for delivering meals to Bear County's homebound residents will hopefully move into its $23 million new location by Thanksgiving or by the end of the month. Meals on Wheels Chief Strategy and Development Officer says the new 44,000 square foot building off of Nacogdoches just outside of Loop 410 was made possible mainly by donations. We have money from the city bond in it. We have money from Meals on Wheels that we put in from our reserves and from selling some properties that, that we had. But we raised about $12 million from the community to put towards this project. So that's tremendous. Maine says even though the groundbreaking for the new location happened last year, this has been years in the making. We purchased this property in 2018, um, but we've been planning, you know, we've been thinking about a new building for a lot longer than that. We've outgrown our space that we moved into in the mid 90s, probably 10 years ago. The kitchen alone, bigger than their old building, and now they're going to be able to produce 30,000 meals a day versus the 10,000 meals they were making in their old building. She says the long term ability to have more volunteers in the building and increase the number of meals made in the future is crucial. She says the number of seniors only continues to increase in Bear County. We know that seniors came out of COVID a little worse off than they were before. So the population of people who need our services is bigger proportionally than it was pre COVID. And it's just going to be more. There's just more people that need support and help. So the kitchen's going to be amazing. And the nonprofit known for delivering meals to Bear County's homebound residents will hopefully move into its $23 million new location by Thanksgiving or by the end of the month. All right, so if you've ever traveled uh, across Texas, you know you are in need for a good stop like a Bucky's. Well, guess what? Our monarchs, they also need that as well. And that's what one, that's a goal of one local high school. They are taking an active role in making sure monarch butterflies have a rest area as they travel through Texas, making their way to Mexico. So students at the Fenwick Academy spent Friday working on a monarch garden. The school is working with the National Wildlife Federation's Monarch Heroes program to create it on the school's campus through a $1,500 grant. Students are learning about the butterflies and what pollinators need in order to survive their annual migration. The monarch butterflies travel and they, um, they migrate every year along the I-35 route. And because there's not a lot of vegetation on the route, they, the population has been slowly declining. They don't have places to eat or lay eggs so the population can grow. Our pollinators are so important. Mm -hmm. Students are hoping the new garden will be a popular place for these butterflies to recharge. The Academy's program coordinator is hoping the campus is awarded a grant next year to maintain that monarch garden and continue to build the project. You can do this at home by planting milkweed, even if it's tropical milkweed, even if it's not native milkweed, people mm -hmm. are saying plant native, but tropical milkweed is, I mean, mine is doing really well with a lot of yeah. Yeah, monarchs you've done right a now. Yeah, a lot, a lot Greg's missed, monarchs. I get a lot of people messaging me <laughs> yeah. like, what are your butterflies eating? That purple flower, Greg's missed flower. It's like uh, the best thing nice. for them. Yeah. So, yeah. It's good to know. I um, I saw about 100 monarchs and queens out by the river, and I called Sarah to figure out what. Yeah, she FaceTimed me. I was like <laughs> I half asleep. I was like, yep. Identify these right now. I was like, those are definitely queens and monarchs. Good job, Sarah. <laughs> I needed my, my kudos yeah. from Sarah there, the butterfly gal. <laughs> All right, here's what we're going to talk about in the forecast right now. Now, this weekend is, is going to be cool. We will only top off near 60 degrees uh, both today and tomorrow. It is going to be windy, though, today. And early tomorrow morning, there is going to be a light freeze in the hill country. So if you live north of Loop 1604, uh, I would start to consider perhaps bringing in some of uh, those plants that are sensitive to a freeze or covering them up. Again, it's going to be a light freeze.
days, so not really uh, below freezing for very long, but still something to consider. And this fall feeling is going to stick with us all week long next week. We're not going to see short lived cold air like we have the last couple of times we've had a front move through 46 degrees outside right now. You can see just how sunny it is out there. Winds are from the north at about 14, 15 miles per hour, so it feels like it's in the low uh, 40s, upper 30s with that wind chill. It's 39 in Rock Springs, 46 in New Valley, 48 in Gonzales, 47 in New Braunfels, 51 in Pleasanton. And again, winds are fairly strong behind this front that we saw move through yesterday. Uh, wind sustained at 15 to 20 miles per hour, a few gusts up to 25 to 30 miles per hour. So it still feels like 36 in Kerrville, still feels like freezing in Rock Springs, feels like 40 in New Braunfels, feels like 42 in Gonzales, and it feels like 41 in Del Rio. For today's forecast, we'll spend most of our day in the 50s. I mean, we're already at about uh, upper 40s at the airport right now, so it is going to be a cool day, but you won't really need the heavier jacket until later tonight. Once the sun sets at 540, temperatures are going to tumble. We'll be in the 40s by 8 p.m. Again, winds are actually going to calm uh, early, later on tonight, and that'll allow for us to have a very cold evening. Highs in your neighborhood, 62 in Yavaldi, 57 in Kerrville, 55 in Rock Springs, 60 in Del Rio, 60 in Catula, 59 in Canyon Lake, 57 in Bulverde, Bernie and Holotus, 59 in Seguin, and it'll be 62 in Divine. Again, here's a look at early tomorrow morning, the areas that will likely see at least a light freeze north of 1604, including uh, areas west toward Rio Bedina, but at 30 in Bernie tomorrow morning, 30 in Bulverde, right at freezing in Kerrville and in Canyon Lake. Again, only below freezing for about an hour or two, but still a light freeze could damage some of that sensitive vegetation. It will not be freezing here in San Antonio. We'll top off, but we'll bottom out right near 37 early tomorrow morning. By the way, this is pretty on schedule for the average first freeze for the hill country, so we're not seeing anything too out of the uh, normal up there. Now, when we look at the weather setup, there's that front that's continued to race off to the east that brought us the colder weather, but in its wake, another system is setting up. We're going to see that front move through on Monday, but until then, again, an early morning freeze for the hill country tomorrow, but we'll be at 37 in San Antonio. Then a few more clouds in the afternoon, high temperature of 59, so another cool day on Sunday. And before it can get warm, that front is going to approach. We'll have some scattered rain on Monday morning. Not a drought buster by any means, but just some dampness early on Monday morning. Then that front will move through and it'll be staying cool for the week ahead. Pretty unusual to have this many days in a row of cool weather in the middle of November. I've been saying this looks a little bit more like a January forecast than a mid November forecast for us. But after that front moves through on Monday mornings in the upper 30s, afternoons in the 50s. That's it. It's going to be sweater weather for about a week at least. Sarah, thank you. All right, it's 950 and 48 degrees. And still to come, sweater weather is here to stay. And Pillsbury says that they're stepping up their game with a new interactive item. How you can snag one in just a few moments. Welcome back. A North Carolina police officer being hailed a hero after saving a couple, their small children and two dogs from their burning home. The fire broke out Wednesday night and now we're learning from investigators that that fire was intentionally set. The family says it started in the kids playroom and quickly spread through the walls, but the couple had no idea what was going on. It was just before midnight when the family heard someone pounding on their front door. He just like was sleeping and then bang, bang, bang on the door. Such a horrible and and so strong. I got scared. And the police officer said, everybody get out of the house, get out of the house. Yeah, unbelievable. A police officer who just happened to be on routine patrol noticed the house and the couple's car that was on fire and sprung into action. The couple says smoke detectors never went off because all of the smoke was trapped inside the walls and the attic. Cornelius police say that they have a possible suspect in this case. It's sweater weather season and ugly holiday sweater sweater events will be coming up soon. So Pillsbury here to help you out. They have a perfect sweater for you starring the famous Doughboy. We're not saying it's ugly. It has the Doughboy on the front and if you press his stomach, he says the iconic boohoo. Nice. Did I do a good that job? That was good. Woo -hoo, woo -hoo. Yeah. Oh, that was good, RJ. It can also it also has a scannable 
cres crescent roll on the left hand sleeve that unlocks seasonal recipes, <laughs> holiday playlists, <laughs> tips for baking, and inspiration for your, I mean, it's just the sweater that keeps giving. Absolutely, yes. What will they come up with next? <laughs> I just want a sweater that can like bake me something. <laughs> like, you know what? Ask and you probably will receive. I yeah. know. <laughs> I wouldn't want people like going up to me. Poking you? No, yeah. absolutely. Do not yeah, poke me. Not. not a good idea there. <laughs> Yeah, this morning time and temperature right now, it's 9.55 and we're getting up to 50 degrees, 48 right now, if you're looking at your screen. David Elder, let's see what he's cooking up this morning on Texas Eats. I want to start with this item right here in the front, truffle eggs and toast. Talk to me about how this is prepared. Basically, this is just a really nice scrambled egg. We're going to go ahead and uh, put a little bit of Gruyere with it, shaved truffles. We're going to double cream it, and then we're also going to make your bread. So you're making the bread in-house too? Everything. That's awesome. All right. Cheers, cheers. to you. Ah, the cheers. truffle egg and toast, that's the bite. Give me some love. Mm. <laughs> that's good. That is delicious. All right, we've got molds are high today in the pollen count. Pigweed and juniper are present in low amounts. It's 49 in San Antonio. We're slowly warming up, but it's going to be a cool day. You know, we're really only going to top off near 60 degrees this afternoon. Winds will be from the north, gusting at about 25 miles per hour and becoming chilly tonight. Temperatures will quickly fall back into the 40s as soon as we see the sunset. Tomorrow, a light freeze in the hill country. So north of 1604, there's going to be a light freeze. It'll be 37 in San Antonio. 59 tomorrow for the high temperature. Some scattered morning showers early on Monday, then another front moves through. That keeps it feeling like winter for the remainder of the week. Morning lows near 40, afternoons in the 50s. Thank you, Sarah. Hey, thank you, RJ. It has been my fun. pleasure. Now I know why Max is always in such a good mood. Hang out with y'all. <laughs> we like to have fun. Yeah, have Thanks fun. for watching. Hey. Hey, it's David Elder, and today on Texas Eats, we're traveling all across the Lone Star State, going to great restaurants you won't want to miss. Get ready for truffle-loaded steak and eggs and caviar from one of San Antonio's premier brunch spots. Thank goodness, that's how you Here's brunch San in San Antonio. Antonio. Here's to San Antonio. And we're heating things up in the outdoor kitchen with Shiner steamed mussels. Orale, it is a Mexican lager made by Shiner, and it's going to pair so well with these mussels we're making today. Plus. We head to Dallas for some Southern cuisine curated by celebrity chef Tiffany Derry. The duck fat fried chicken, and this is the bite. Oh, come on. All that and more right now on Texas Eats. First stop on today's foodie adventures at an authentic Mexican restaurant on the far north side of San Antonio. Let's go inside Pantila Cantina. Joining us now is Gabby Hinojosa. She is the executive chef and co-owner out here at the restaurant. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you so much. And right in front of us, I mean, we got a big drink. You have delicious food. I mean, a massive spread. How did all of this get started? Since I remember, I love to cook. And I grew up with my grandma. She owns a farm in Mexico. And I used to love to cook with her. And you actually went to culinary school in New York, right? Yes, CIA. And now you have this spot over here where you get to serve up all these wonderful items that you've learned from culinary school, your background growing up with your grandmother at her farm and that's what I want to talk about right here because you got delicious food. Talk to me about the name of this dish and what's in each bowl. So in every corner of Aguascalientes there's going to be a card with cazuelas uh, called tacos de colores, colorful tacos. We have barbacoa, picadillo, pollo con mole, rajas con elote, chilaquiles verdes, chilaquiles rojos and chicharrón verde. And Y'all, smell a vision. Scratch your screens right now. You can smell this. It is incredible that I want to try some of this right here. You get your fork with me. Cheers to you. Cheers. All right, cheers. That's the bite. This is 
nice flavor on there. Thank it's you. super tender. Thank you so much. Now, I want to try this one here, the chicharroni de verde right here, because that's one of my favorites. I mean, you get that nice little crunchy pop, but you also get that little like tangy bite at the end. Here you go, cheers. Cheers. Mmm. Mm. Yeah, that one. <laughs> <laughs> The barbacoa, the picadillo, and all the different side items that you can get are so good. There's so much flavor and they smell incredible. You get some tortillas, you load them up, take the bite, kind of mix them all together and have some fun. A big part of enjoying yourself while you're out here is that they have a full bar and you guys are making different kinds of drinks. But look at the size of this one. What's the name of this drink? Jarro. And what goes inside of this? Jarro de tequila. It's gonna be uh, one full bottle. So it's half uh, tamarind vodka, half tequila. And then we put uh, tamarind carrito, lime, orange, and grapefruit. So it's gonna be very citrusy. Oh, nice. So you're actually supposed to scoop it out of this. Yes. And serve it into a cup. So I'm gonna hand you a cup. Okay. I'm gonna drink it out of this. Oh my God. <laughs> Cheers, Cheers to you. This looks amazing. <sighs> that is so good. It is so Thank refreshing. You so much. Oh my gosh. This is a David size cocktail. This thing is huge. I mean, I'm over here drinking like this, but you're supposed to scoop it out. You put it into individual cups. You can share it between friends, and it is really refreshing. It's bright, has that little bit of citrus and sour note to it, and it is really good and complements the food very well. Talk to me about these tacos, because they actually come in a little bicycle. So in Mexico, uh, there's gonna be a guy in the morning selling tacos in the little bicycle. So they're gonna be very steamy and soft, amazing, super delicious. Oh my gosh, and look, there's a nice little lime in here as well. So I'm just gonna go like this and just squeeze a little, if you got a lime, you gotta use it, cover it, these guys. Here, you grab one, I grab one. I'm gonna go for this one. All right, so cheers. Lovely. Oh my gosh, here you go. <laughs> oh, give me some elbow. <laughs> Boom! Oh. These tacos taste like more. You have one, you want to have like eight, nine, ten, and they're so delicious. It's like tiny little tacos, but they're packed full of flavor. I love all the different variations that you can get on the inside as well. The presentation on the bicycle, which is an homage to the way that they are sold there in Mexico. You add a little bit of salsa on there, put a little bit of lime juice on there as well. It is so good. And this one right here, the pollo con mole. Talk to me about that, how it's prepared. Half of the recipe is from uh, my grandmother's and half of it is from a really good recipe that I found also in the streets of Mexico. And uh, I put it together and it became amazing. So it's mole poblano, it's a traditional mole poblano. There we go, the pollo con mole. Cheers, Cheers. that's the bite. Mmm, oh wow. <laughs> Give me some more love on that one. Mm. The pollo con mole has a nice sweetness to it, but it's rounded out with a little bit of smokiness and bold notes from the seasoning as well. The meat just falls apart, super tender, flavored down to the bone on there. And when you take a bite, you also get a little bit of the seeds on there, so it's a little bit more of that texture, and it is really good. Again, grab a tortilla, load that thing up, and have yourself a great time. So many different options out here on the menu. You have the cocktails, you have all the different varieties of proteins, the side items, and you have to save room for dessert. This is it right here. Gabby, thank you so much for having us out here. Of course. Panfila Cantina, you have to come up here. I'm gonna grab some of this. And this is actually using a Mexican hot chocolate. Yes. Cheers. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's okay. It's Hello. okay. We did it. This is it. Oh my gosh. I'm not gonna take credit for that. That is Charlie's mom. She makes all the desserts for us. Thank you, Charlie's mom. <laughs> that is incredible. Thank you. Now, we're headed to New Braunfels to check out the 10-day salute to sausage. Prost. 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 Let's go learn more about Worst Fest. <laughs> Joining us now, two Obas out here, Jeff Gable and Mel Kaler. Thank you so much for being on here, gentlemen. Right now, you're gonna be doing a demo for us showing how to make sausage from scratch using an old world tradition. And you actually learned how to make this from your father, is that correct? In fact, I did. Yes, sir, I did. And we grew up doing this. Been doing it our whole lives. Right in front of us here, you have the process set up. You have the casing here. This is actually going to be small intestine off of, uh, say, a 200-pound or so market hog. We're going to cut it off about where we need it. You know, we want to do about a foot or so. Good stout knot on it. And it's going to go onto this machine right here. We've already got it loaded with meat. The meat that's in there is going to be a mixture of pork and beef at this time. And I think Mel's going to run us off one. Mel, you ready to run? one off so you get your your casing on here you've got your knot and you're just gonna basically it, it's it's a lot of eye hand coordination I don't have to look I've been doing this long enough you want to get good and firm you do not want any air in there 
Air is our enemy. This out, I want to hold this one up. So this is yeah. one that was already made, and that's one that you just did right there. And look yeah. how perfect that is. You cut the string the right amount, the casing to the right amount. You've obviously done this a lot. Looks like like a, like some people already got to this one, but this is kind of what the product could look like at the end. <laughs> this is a fraction of the product at the end right here. All right, Prost. 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 That's how you make sausage out here. This is incredible. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Good stuff. I'll take the whole thing. <laughs> Joining us now is Tiffany Main, your volunteer out here at Worst Fest. And who are you volunteering with? With the Como County Senior Citizens Foundation. We facilitate all the Meals on Wheels here. Fantastic. And right in front of us, this is some of the meals that they're actually serving out at the booth. And this is the good stuff, y'all. We're talking like fried chicken wings. You also have a famous potato salad. Talk to me about this one. Okay, it's top secret recipe. <laughs> We're famous for it. When folks get to Worst Fest, they make a beeline for our booth because they want that famous hot German potato salad. We just heard back from the gentleman that's preparing it that it's like his great, 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 great grandmother's recipe, right? I think that goes for all the famous food here, right? <laughs> right, but it's served warm, and so it warms you from the inside out. It pairs very well with polka music and beer. And you know what? That's all we ask for when you're out here at Wars Fest. Cheers. That's the bite. Y'all, that is insane. Give me some love. Boom. I'm so jealous. You get to have this every year around this time. You get to come out here and enjoy it, right? For 10 whole days. <laughs> that's right. Thank you so much, Tiffany. I appreciate your time. Joining us now out here at Worst Fest is the Gross Opa and the president out here, Bob DeFonso and Miles Granzine. Thank you so much for having me out here today. Thank you for being here. Thank you. I want to learn more about Worst Fest. So I'm going to ask you guys some questions here. Now, Bob, talk me about the history of Worst Fest. How did all of this get started? Well, in 1961, uh, there was a gentleman named Ed Grist. He was the city meat inspector, but he was also a veterinarian here in New Braunfels. He thought it would be a great idea to bring together all the sausage makers that lived in New Braunfels and put on a festival. So he went to the city commission. They blessed the, the idea of having this. And so he brought those folks together and they made sausage. And it lasted for six days. Five of them were like leading up to the festival and they had one day event and where all the sausage makers produced their, their sausage and they had over 2,000 people come out for the original Worst Fest celebration. It was called Sausage Week that, at that time. Which, you know what, if it's still called that now, I wouldn't be mad at it, right? That's still a fun name. Now, what about the OPAs, real quick? Uh, explain to me uh, their, their purpose. Like, what do they do? Well, the OPAs, we start off right after this Worst Fest here. We'll start off again, already planning for next year. We do that throughout the year. Then we come in here, and these, all these guys donate thousands of hours to get this festival off the grounds. Not only do they do our festival, they're also out here helping the other nonprofit organizations succeed. That's a big part of Worst Fest. I mean, the nonprofit organizations are huge. You have little league teams, you have band booster clubs out here raising money, and live music as well. So you're supporting a lot of different facets of the community with this event. Now, what can people expect this year when they're coming out? Well, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to walk into our grounds, and we're right here on the Kamal River, and we got land to park on the other the most beautiful grounds around the state of Texas. Once you get through that part, you're going to go through the waterfall and then you're going to hear the music. The music is playing. We've got Alex Meister, the Lady German Band here. And then when you get past that, the smell is just going to knock you down with all the pet headache pancakes, the sausage, the pork chops, and uh, worsen toshins. And so if you get past all that, we got some more music in the hall too. So you guys come on out here, bring the family. If you've never been to Worst Fest, this is the best year to come out because it's just beautiful out here in New Braunfels. And of course, you have all brand new stuff out here as well. Thank you so much for your time, gentlemen. Thank you for having us. Of Thanks course, of course. Thanks, and if we had some beer, Prost, right? Prost. Prost. <laughs> Coming up later on Texas Eats, we head to the Hill Country for some ceviche, shrimp tacos, and fish and chips on Main Street, Fredericksburg. Give me some foot, bro. Woo! That is delicious. And next on the show, we check out some traditional Mexican street food being prepared with a modern twist in the Alamo City. And look at this, y'all. That's the reason for the Oaxaca cheese right there. That's a cheese pole, <laughs> baby. So don't go anywhere. Texas Eats will be right back. <laughs> <laughs> 